That's the truth. I said you could smoke weed in here. You're not smoking cigarettes in here. One half a bowl. See, people are like, he's getting too old for a pass. It's not about making a pass. It's not about making a pass because I can give 50 year olds the same pass I'm giving Sneeko because of their maturity or immaturity levels. It's not about it giving him a pass because he's young. You're not giving him a pass because he's young. You're having a deep understanding because he is in his young, immature age that he's going to make a decision. But when you're 50 and you're making those decisions, you're not getting a pass because you're 50. You're getting a pass because you're immature, but you're not even getting a pass. You're getting an understanding. I shouldn't have, don't use the word pass. You're not giving them a pass. You're understanding why it's happening. And it's for specific, this is why you have to be specific about the categories. A 50 year old who's immature isn't getting an understanding of his age. He's getting an understanding of his maturity level. Sneeko has two folds. You can't deny the fact that he's young. And he's, he's showing what his displays of masculinity looks like. Because I've seen this in boys countless times, time and time again. They think this is healthy masculinity when it's obviously toxic. I'm not kidding. You said that. You're disrespecting me by smoking in my fucking gym. I and mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. It's all right. There's no more cigarettes. You got a spar and settle this. He should ban him. Bradley should ban him. Bradley should give Sneeko zero chances. But that's the thing is if you don't know Sneeko that well, you might want to give him a chance. I know Sneeko a little bit and I would just ban him. That's what I would do. I would ban him. I would ban him the same way I'd ban my brothers. If my brother treated me this way, he's gone. Sorry, I love you. Maybe in six months, maybe in a year, you can come back. You're banned. That's what I'm saying. Values over loyalty. You're banned. That's it. Ban him. It's too disrespectful. It is too consent violating. That's it. He violated consent multiple times. He was told the boundaries. It's not his place. He walked into someone else's home and disrespected it. That's it. You can come back in a year, maybe. Maybe in two years. It's something. There's some answer. But honestly, it has to come from him. He doesn't want it. I think your punishment, like your anime punishment of I'm going to beat this kid. I'm going to starve him. I'm going to like show him that he's not. He, I'm going to humble him only works because he wants to change. So you think your method worked, but your method didn't work. The kid wanted to change. And so that's why this idea of like, it worked for me, it will work for you, doesn't work. So with Sneeko, he has to want it and he doesn't want it. There was something admirable about that, you know, even though he was a very dangerous person and he had taken it way too far. But this is what I mean by complexity of the villain. It's like, well, <laughs> he had the courage of his convictions. Let's put it that way. You know, and so when you see someone like Andrew Tate, well, first of all, if you have any sense, you think this is a guy that's actually crawled in the ring. Mm. And the second thing you think is, well, just because his moral compass is warped and, and warped in a serious way on the like electronic pimp front. And like, I think in a fatal way, personally, that's the highest likelihood because I don't think you can do that without it permeating everything. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, you know, he's a two dimensional villain, you know, or that there aren't things about him that are complex and interesting and potentially even admirable. You know, people are complicated. And well, that's the hard part, right? We are complicated and there is nuance. And I think everyone has the right to redemption. And I think everyone has the right to enter back into society to some extent or their bubbles or their families or whatever. I think it's just difficult. Harmony says, what do you think about the whole living in my villain era trend? I think it's a good feeling to be like, I'm just going to be the villain. I'm going to be in my villain era. I think there's something really cathartic about it. But obviously, like, I'm going to encourage people to seek out their joy and to be compassionate and to be thoughtful and to be happy, kind, and healthy. And, like, I'm going to encourage people to be, you know, a lot of things that aren't about being in your villain era. But I think a lot of people cope with the idea of, like, I'm in my villain era to kind of say, I'm going to take control of my life and I'm going to do what's good for me and not for anyone else. And I think there's a part of that that's a really part of growing up. And then there's a part of growing up that says, like, being a villain is silly, right? Even Peterson has that tendency where he's like, fine, you think I'm the bad guy, I'll be the bad guy. And I'm like, Re relax, Nicki Minaj, sit down. It's like there's this gusto, this machismo, this like toxic masculinity that all these people produce where they're like, oh, I'll be the bad guy, you know? But that's the thing. It is tempting to be the bad guy because there's some part of your brain that tells you the bad guy is dominant. The bad guy is a winner. The bad guy somehow does what he wants and there's a freedom in that. There's something about it that appeals to us. And I don't blame people for being tempted towards it. I would just argue there's more freedom 
and being not the villain, but not even the hero. I'm not much of a hero. I'm a real with you. I'm a Slytherin. I ain't no Gryffindor. I just don't think there's much value for most people to be the hero or the villain. I just think there are so many other things you could be. Carl mm. Rogers talked about this. You know, he said people won't listen because they're too terrified of changing. Because, you know, if you listen to someone, they tell you how weird they are. You share in that self-revelation. It's well, There's a good and bad to this, right? I, I would like to be known as somebody who's so weird that it makes people pause and think like, does she know something I don't know? Yes, but also no, right? I don't, I don't think I really know anything people don't know. I just know it more than people know it. So I can actually integrate it into my life and that's why I can have like the life I want, right? I think it does show like your ability to play within society shows. Now, not everyone's good at this. I think Sneeko, Mr. Girl, and Peterson all suffer from in a spectrum Peterson's the most reasonable amongst them, but still all suffer from a disconnect of how to be reasonable within society. They're almost like the people at the grocery store who stand out to you and you're like, dude, just like act normal in the grocery store. Like everyone knows what that means, but also what does that mean culturally speaking? You kind of know what it means, but it feels like they all forget what that means. Like I saw this clip of uh what's that working out guy we just reviewed the other day with the big muscles and I said like he's attractive but I'm obviously not into his type he had Sneeko in his gym and Sneeko was like lighting up a cigarette or something or smoking a cigar and it was so disrespectful and I'm like punch Sneeko in the face like I felt this like desire I'm like punch him in the face he's acting so so unacceptable in a social setting that he needs to feel the repercussions of this but then of course I can't promote violence because I don't want Sneeko to actually get punched in the face but I felt it was justified in that moment to be like punch him in the face he's being so disrespectful he, you've already asked him not to do this you said I don't care if it's part of a bit I'm not interested stop smoking in my gym and Sneeko was running away from him like a little girl and I was like catch him and like a little rabbit I should say I was like catch him and punch him and that part of my human brain is recognizing, I think, my monkey brain is recognizing that this human is acting so unnatural in a very clear setting that they must be dangerous. Because if you can't even do the basics, there's something about you that's unnerving or just disrespectful. There's something about it that's not okay, right? And, and at the same time, my elevated sense of self doesn't believe in violence, so like, don't punch him. But also don't ever let him back in your gym and completely ban him from benefiting from association with you. Right? I saw that. It was so triggering. It was just so disrespectful. Right? Sneeko and his smirk infuriated me. Oh, was the worst. This is so just like, so do you understand like Sneeko is in his villain arc and it's failing him. It is not benefiting him to be in his villain arc. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, people are calling because of this shit's funny. Oh. Is she a fan of booty mo? Kissing, kissing, noise, noise, noise over songs. <laughs> Let me see. Let me talk to you. Hello? Hello? What? Yeah, what's up? Yo, the service is super bad. The service is really bad. Look, he's running away. Look how Sneeko turns his body and runs away. Huh. Yo, I'm not kidding, though. I'll smash your fucking camera right now. No, nah, I'm not playing. I'm going to smash it. I'll smash Whoa. Who put this together? This shit doesn't even hurt. How do you do that? Bro, I'm not playing with you. I'm not. It's out. How do you do that? It's out. I'm not playing. Is that? How'd you light a cigarette? See all the security uh, uh, cleaners. It's out. Dude, can I have a cigarette? I'm not playing. It's out. I'll smash your fucking camera. You don't. It's out. I'm putting it out. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. No, I'm really not playing with you. I'm not playing either. Actually, like actually. Yo, 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 yo. Sure, 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 sure. What do you want to do? Decide what you want to okay, do. Okay, okay, it's out. It's out. It's out. Decide Brad. what you want to do. Brad, it's out. It's out. Make make your mind. Yeah, well, you're not smoking cigarettes here. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing at all. I'll shut this whole shit down. Why are you so mad about masculinity in 10 seconds? 
<laughs> full of cigarettes. I don't like cigarettes in my fucking gym. Period. Bro, it was half a cigarette. I know, but I'm not. I'm not good. I'm not good with that. It's it's not, out. The joke's done. The joke's done. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Okay. I'll take that shit out too. You, you do that shit again? Stream because of a cigarette. I'm gonna end this. I'll smash this goddamn camera right in front of your face. You don't do that. You do that shit again. For I swear to God. I swear to God, bro. That's disrespectful as fuck. Look how small Sneeko is. He's such a boy. This boy needs to go home to his mother. He needs to go home to his parents. He's just a boy. He's like a little kid. He's in his little kid era. He's in his villain era. He's trying so hard to find out what masculinity is. And this is what toxic masculinity looks like. It's a display of faux confidence, faux dominance. It's a... <clears throat> It's bratting. It's like picking on people that are weaker than you. It's like punching down. It's this idea of like, oh, I'm going to show my dominance and I'm going to run away at the same time. You're so dominant. Fight Bradley. <laughs> I just there's something about it that's just so disrespect. I mean, everything about it's disrespectful. It's obvious what's disrespectful about it. But this is just so frustrating to watch because you sit here and you're like, how does a person go through so much like introspection and then stop? But I've seen it. I can't tell you how many people I've met that have been so introspective in their lives and then they just crash. And I'm like, what is going on? It's like their monkey brain takes over. It's like their evolution. Like they just go right to like, I'm a human. And I'm like, bro, okay, that's fine. Like so disrespectful, bro. Fuck. That's the truth. I said you could smoke weed in here. You're not smoking cigarettes in here. One half a bowl. See, people are like, he's getting too old for a pass. It's not about making a pass. It's not about making a pass. Because I can give 50-year-olds the same pass I'm giving Sneeko because of their maturity or immaturity levels. It's not about it giving him a pass because he's young. You're not giving him a pass because he's young. You're having a deep understanding because he is in his young, immature age that he's going to make a decision. But when you're 50 and you're making those decisions, you're not getting a pass because you're 50. You're getting a pass because you're immature, but you're not even getting a pass. You're getting an understanding. I shouldn't have, don't use the word pass. You're not giving them a pass. You're understanding why it's happening. And it's for specific, this is why you have to be specific about the categories. A 50-year-old who's immature isn't getting an understanding of his age. He's getting an understanding of his maturity level. Sneeko has twofold. You can't deny the fact that he's young. And he's, he's showing what his displays of masculinity looks like. Because I've seen this in boys countless times, time and time again. They think this is healthy masculinity when it's obviously toxic. But this is what boys are displaying as healthy masculinity, and it's not. And that's why people are saying, hey, this is what toxic masculinity is. And people are like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Mr. Beast is the same age. Doesn't matter. Not all 20-something-year-olds are the same. Mr. Beast and Sneeko don't fall into the same category. It's not one-to-one, -one, guys. Not every... Boots was saying that yesterday on the panel. It was driving me crazy. Oh, like, all 25-year-olds are having the same experience. No, they're not. My brother was married at 22 and had a home by, like, what, 26? And was making six figures. by before he was 30, he was making, like, 180K a year. What are you talking about? Should I, all co should I compare all of you to my brother? Are you all going to say my brother is having the average 20-something-year-old experience? And what does average even mean? Everybody, everybody is having a different lived experience, but your age, because of the way your body and brain develop, are going to have moments of it in which you're just going to make specific decisions. Not always, right? Sneeko's actively rejecting maturity. Exactly. He's actively rejecting maturity and growing up, he's actively rejecting responsibility. He's actively rejecting any sense of growing up. He's Peter Pan syndrome right here. Peter Pan syndrome right here. I think he's 26, Hada. It's, you know, I think it's masculinity, but also immature. Interesting. This is what I mean to say, like maturity, immaturity. You can be immature at 55. You can be mature when it comes to paying your bills. And Sneagle pays his bills. Is he mature because he pays his bills? You know what I mean? Mr. Maid says, you're right. The biggest difference between giving a pass and giving grace is the correlation that inf that is enforced and made clear. Exactly. I'm not kidding. I'm not I'll kidding. smash your fucking camera right in front of you. I'm not kidding. You said that. You're disrespecting me by smoking in my fucking gym. I and mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. It's all right. There's no more cigarettes. Got a and this. He should ban him. Bradley should ban him. Bradley should give Sneeko zero chances. But that's the thing is if you don't know Sneeko that well, you might want to give him a chance. I know Sneeko a little bit and I would just ban him. That's what I would do. I would ban him.
I would ban him the same way I'd ban my brothers. If my brother treated me this way, he's gone. Sorry, I love you. Maybe in six months, maybe in a year, you can come back. You're banned. That's what I'm saying. Values over loyalty. You're banned. That's it. Ban him. It's too disrespectful. It is too consent violating. That's it. He violated consent multiple times. He was told the boundaries. It's not his place. He walked into someone else's home and disrespected it. That's it. You can come back in a year, maybe. Maybe in two years. Ban him. Bro, 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 bro. But he's going to go 100. He's going to go 150. It's out, bro. Why are you so heated? Because I don't like shit like that. I'm not playing. That's a funny game, but I'm not playing. It's out. I'm not kidding. Don't do that shit again. I'm not kidding. I didn't, yeah. I know. I, I saw it in his eyes, bro. That's the same look he gave me when he sparred. Nah, that wasn't the same look. That was the that same was look. That was like I was about to hit you dead with my fucking fist, bro. That was the same look. That was not the same look. That's the look he gave me. That wasn't the same look. Are you, you know really mad? Look. You're disrespectful like that. That's not respecting me at all. And the, the chip tooth was respectful. What was, bro, you friendly act, sparring? You act like I wanted to do that? You thought I wanted to do that? You did want to do it. You, you Bro, I told you three times I didn't want to do it. You made me do that dumbass shit. I didn't make you do it. Bro, you called me on the phone. Oh, Get this shit on camera. You called me on the phone in the fucking in the fucking SUV with this guy. And I said, we shouldn't do it multiple times. You came here. Well, I said, we shouldn't do it multiple times. Bro, he's, he's, he's Nah, he's, he's acting like that. I'm not. Then I was not mad. Now I'm mad. And you know it's different now. And I know you know it's different. Don't come back my bro. Nothing smells bad in here. I don't give a fuck. I told you don't smoke in my fucking It's not a mm-hmm. joke. There's like no more smoke. It's not a joke. Here. There's no smoke. Don't disrespect me in my fucking house like that. I mean that, for real. Amen. There's no smoke. I know, but I'm telling you, like, it's a funny game for a minute, and yeah. then it's not funny. There's I don't no, like there's, that. There's no game. We're just talking. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you guys Ban are playing a game, like, the Steve will do it bullshit, like, it's funny. You Ban. You shit bullshit? That's your man. Well, bro. that's my man, but I'm telling him, like, it's not funny, and I told this motherfucker, I told this motherfucker not to do it. And you over here trying to sideline, do the same shit. I'm not cool with it. I'm not trying to sideline. You're going to back me up or what? Party. It's just so stressful. I need to smoke now. Yeah, man. Go smoke outside. It's too cold, bro. It's not cold. It's fucking. Ban him. Ban the little bro. Ban the little bro. My son needs to be banned. Ban him. I'm his mother. I'm telling you, ban him. I'm his older son. Ban him. I'd ban my little brother. I'm going to ban Sneeko. It's not that hard, guys. You might like them. Ban them. I like lots of people that I don't let into certain spaces. If you're not mature enough to handle the space, you can't be there. Just like in society. If you're not mature enough to handle society, it is what it is, bros. You know what I mean? Love Sneeko, ban him. Ban him. Ban this consciousness from every gym. This unique consciousness, this little boy that used to be a baby and his mother raised him and his father raised him, ban him. Ban this beautiful consciousness. He doesn't, if he can't mature enough to be in the space and handle it and be kind to people, block him, ban him. In California. Bradley is too nice. Bradley is being so overly nice. You know why? Because Bradley, like me, we look at people like this and we're like, we know what you're doing. We know what you're, you're 15. We know what you're doing. You can't do this. And we're praying and hoping they act better. But when they don't, just ban them. Now, I've already gone through it with Sneeko. So I already know like, hey, you can't do this. You're banned. And that's the consequence, right? Call me anytime, but you're banned. Bradley probably doesn't have enough experience with Sneeko to know he should just ban him right now. But Bradley, like me, like anyone, is giving him grace. But eventually he should just ban him. Outside. No, so entertaining to watch. Sorry. Can, dude, can we just smoke one cigarette? Bro, you can smoke weed in here. You cannot smoke cigarettes yeah, in here. Smoke See, you can smoke weed, but you can't smoke cigarettes. Bradley is base. No, bro. You can smoke weed in here. Cigarette smoke on your walls is disgusting. Listen to me when I say every time I go into like a creation building or a home or something, I can always tell y'all smoke in your houses. It's all over your walls. Weed never had that problem. You're not smoking cigarette. cigarettes in here. What about the sauna? The cigarette thing is not happening. The sauna is like a hot pot. I hate cigarettes, bro. I hate that smell. I don't I don't like it. The only time I'm around cigarette smoke is at the f- casino. That's it. I hate cigarettes. I think I saw you smoke a cigarette in the casino. Yeah. Hata, I don't agree with punishment. You said banning him would be a nice thing to do. Sneeko needs consequences to learn. I just don't think so. I don't think any study shows, and I don't think it shows in people that I know that punishment really works because, again, people are rebellious. He'll double down in his rebellion. If you punish people like Sneeko, he'll just double down and become even worse because, look, he's been punished. He got his YouTube channel taken away. It didn't help. It doesn't work with people like that. 
You have to basically, you can't punish them. You have to deny them the thing that they think they want, which is like the kind of attention they want. And people keep rewarding the attention. I mean, I'm kind of doing it now by talking about him. I'm kind of rewarding him by even like talking about him. But I will say that you you can't, he has to either grow out of the stage in time, but I just don't think punishing him would matter. It didn't matter if you punched him. It wouldn't matter. It's like, it's not going to do what we think it's going to do, right? Yes, in a casino. Oh, why do you hate the smell? Uh, bro, this is a place of business. Tons of people come here. I don't want cigarette smell in this. Um, I disagree. He just hasn't had the right consequences yet. Well, that's what I mean. What does consequence mean? Usually when people say he needs consequences, it means he needs to be punished, but he's had plenty of consequences. I think getting your YouTube channel taken away is a big consequence. For a lot of people, it'd be life shattering. For some people, it would even make you change, but it didn't work with Sneeko. It's the wrong method with him, and I'm going to stand by that. I think it is the wrong method for Sneeko to take away his YouTube channel in that way. Punishing him doesn't seem to work. When you do it for yourself, though, that's what's important. Bradley isn't banning Sneeko for the benefit of Sneeko. He should be doing it for the benefit of himself. Boundaries are not for other people, guys. They're for you. Bradley needs to say, I have a boundary and I need this to be a safe space for me and I need my gym to be run the way I run my gym. You can't come here. And Sneeko, that's not for Sneeko's benefit. It's for Bradley's benefit. Boundaries are not about other people. They're about you, right? So again, I think Sneeko is not going to learn from punishment. It hasn't worked yet. He needs something deeper and more profound. He needs either the right person he respects to influence him in a positive way, or he needs to have his life really shattered. Maybe he needs to face death. Maybe he needs to have someone close to him die. Maybe he needs to, you know, have everyone around him, like, ignore him and not find him funny anymore. Who knows? It's like the class, he's like kind of like the class clown who has moments of, like, introspection. It's, like, really inter interesting. But then it gets tired. It gets boring. It's like, okay, we get it. Your stick is getting boring. And he's like, ha, 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 And then eventually he might change. Hayda says, yeah, punishment doesn't work and maybe the wrong method for Sneeko, but it, but it's for your own boundaries. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you anticipated me? You anticipated me, Hayda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think, you know, that's the mom energy. He needs a harsh punishment, a reality check. That doesn't work. Name me a study that shows boys benefit from being physically hurt or punished by their fathers and don't end up growing up to being abusers or having problems with women or their self-esteem. Give me some sort of story that isn't completely anecdotal, but actually shows me a well-rounded man that was beat by his father and didn't end up growing up to have issues. Show me it. Because I am always able to trace back some issues with these men who have been hit by their fathers. That's not the same thing as putting Sneeko in a ring with some gloves and saying like, Look, let's teach you positive masculinity. But that's not what he needs. Again, assuming one size fits all is such a mistake. Who's Steve? Steve will do literally, will do it literally, walks into people's, Restaurants get super drunk and smashes the place. He does the same at Brad's gym a lot. Ew. Brad should ban him too. Just a little bit of trauma is all. It's a good kind of trauma. I think you guys are fantasizing about. I think you guys are like anime fantasizing right now. I think men do this and I do it too. It's the same conversation I was trying to have with Abba and Steven about the fighting. There's a fantasy, a hard on of I'm going to get jumped and I'm going to take these guys in a fight. And you think like, I'm going to have the shit beat out of me, but I'm going to come out a better person. And it is a fantasy. That's what I'm saying. It's a fantasy. But that's what it is. It's a fantasy to say, I'm just going to hit this kid a little and he'll be better. I'm just going to like hit. That's your animal brain. That's what I'm saying. My monkey brain also wanted Bradley Martin to hit Sneeko. My monkey brain wanted that. My monkey brain's stupid. It's unevolved. Our monkey brains are unevolved. And it thinks if I just hit him, if I just beat this kid to the point of almost dying, if I commit a crime and beat this kid up, maybe he'll grow from it. It's monkey brain. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm kidding, Brittany. Ugh, just a little trolling. Fargo. What does the mature, loving patriarch do with a son like Sneeko? That's the question. 
And this is as a society how we're challenged. How do you help Sneakos? You can neglect him. You can ostracize him. You can bully him. You can beat him. You can jail him. We know jail doesn't work. It's something. There's some answer. But honestly, it has to come from him. He doesn't want it. I think your punishment, like your anime punishment of I'm going to beat this kid. I'm going to starve him. I'm going to like show him that he's not. He, I'm going to humble him. Only works because he wants to change. So you think your method worked, but your method didn't work. The kid wanted to change. And so that's why this idea of like, it worked for me, it will work for you, doesn't work. So with Sneeko, he has to want it and he doesn't want it. Steve will do it. A YouTube is quite popular. I don't know who that is. Oh, I think I know the name actually. But yeah, he doesn't want it. So if you shun him, send him to prison, ostracize him, bully him, if you beat him up, it's not going to matter. Unless he wants to get better, this, which is why I say like humans are going to human and I radically accept it. I radically accept people aren't going to want to change. If I can't get someone to stop cheating on their wife and see that it's wrong, you think I'm going to get Sneeko to recognize that he's being a class clown? What is wrong with people? I can't even get grown up people to admit that like serial cheating is wrong and that you shouldn't be okay with your people cheating on you and like lying to you and deceiving you and gaslighting you. And you want me to convince Sneeko that being a class clown is wrong when he's making millions of dollars or whatever he's making? What are we really saying to people when we don't have the role models and we don't even see it in people? I think if Bradley smashed Sneeko's face in, he would never disrespect his gym again. That's not the lesson we want to teach Sneeko. You want to teach him the wrong lesson, Jeremy. You want to teach him the lesson of being afraid of disrespecting Bradley's gym. Does that, and that's not the same thing. You're teaching him the lesson to be afraid of, of Bradley. And then he's going to sue him for violence, right? He's going to like end up going to court over it probably. But you're asking Bradley to stoop down to his animal monkey brain instead of being the mature adult in that situation and just banning him. You're asking Bradley to be less of a man, less of positive masculinity, less of a leader to give in to a monkey brain that's not going to teach Sneeko anything. Sneeko's not going to learn to respect people. He's not going to learn to respect anyone else's gym. He's not going to change as a person. If Sneeko's wallet is affected, is the only way no person can change one another? No, his wallet it doesn't matter. YouTube took away his wallet, so it doesn't matter. Money isn't everything for Sneeko. He is literally a lost child. Have you guys seen um, Silent Voice? Silent Voice, it's the anime. What is it called? A Silent Voice. It's like a really great anime about a bully who basically gets bullied. And it's interesting, the psychology of it. And I think Sneeko is somewhere more aligned in that. But it's not going to be just ostracization, but maybe. There's something that has to happen to Sneeko for him to get what he's doing. And if he wants to be better, but he has to want it. He has to actually want it. And again, I don't want Bradley to become less of a man to put Sneeko in his place. You shouldn't, if he, if Bradley is a good man, he won't hit Sneeko because that's what his monkey brain wants him to do. He will ban him and set a higher standard for activity at his gym. He will ask for people to be higher, not go lower. Sneeko wants to be hit. Sneeko wants to be hit. The views would be mad. He could sue Bradley. Sneeko has that face on his face because he literally, he's do it. He's tempting Bradley. He's literally the devil tempting Bradley to hit him. And you think giving into the devil is going to be good for Bradley. It's such a mistake. It's such a mistake. Do not hit Sneeko. He will absolutely use this for more clout. He will absolutely double down. I think Sneeko knows he won't get his or he won't, he won't get his hit. A silent voice always makes me cry too. Oh my God, it's so good. Sneeko is far too motivated, extreme, externally motivated and cares zero about integrity. I have no clue what would help him though. It's hard to say. Everyone right, is right about the environment is different here. He's the one of the most destructive YouTubers there is and the guy is super popular. The Steve will do it guy. So I don't know, I don't know the lore with this guy. Like I don't know the lore with the Steve will do it guy. But yeah, if he's like even a worse influence, you know, in the situation, Bradley should ban both of them. You know what I mean? But yeah, you guys should watch the anime. It's so good. Yeah, Sneeko is being self-destructive. He's like in his villain era. He's like, this is what I want. He can't, Oh, if you hit Sneeko in the face, he'll love it for views, bro. He'll complain about it. He'll ride that train. 
it will not change who he is. I very much doubt it. Now, if Sneeko loses his legs, but it can't be because somebody did it to him. He'll just get bitter. But if Sneeko gets in a car accident because he's being reckless, it could change him as a person. If Sneeko hurts himself in a way that is clear to him, I think this could change him. I think the only way Sneeko might change is if he hurts himself. Because right now, Sneeko trusts himself, but in an insecure way. Right now, Sneeko is sort of being reinforced that he's making good decisions because it's sort of working for him. I don't think it's going to come, even though he's externally externally motivated, he's he's also not. Confuse him with a kiss. <laughs> Sneeko, like, he needs to, he probably needs to be the reason something goes wrong in order for him to learn. But right now, he isn't going wrong enough to know he's the reason. You can't do it to him. If somebody does it to him, he's not going to care. So if you take away his money, he's going to be like, see, like Russell Brand, it's it's the government. that They're coming. For, like, it's, it's somebody else is doing it to me. How you think the arc ends for Sneeko? Fuck, I don't know. Obviously, he could just go in a self-destructive pattern and blow himself up. Or he could like have a like a real introspective moment and awake from like this bullshit. But why would he? What is the incentive? Unless he knows it is. People don't change unless they want to. They don't. And he, everyone he like associates with in this world, nobody knows what to do with him. It has to come from him. That's why we're all, we can't do anything about it. Even if you ban him, he's going to blame you. See, the world was against me. It's that like, it's a little, nar it's like totally narcissistic, right? Is there ever a point to physical violence or confronting bad behavior with a threat of violence? Almost never. Self-defense, pure self-defense to protect yourself. Otherwise, no. What is violence? What does violence mean? It means you lack discipline. If you have violence in a ring, which is about discipline, that's different. If you have a fight that is like, like a, in a boxing ring, that is a form of planned violence that can be beneficial. But sporadic, monkey-brained violence, unless it is self-defense, what is the point of violence except to say you're not disciplined and you, lack, you have weakness? Violence is a form of weakness. Defending yourself is different justifying violence in the name of defending yourself when it's not real defense is weakness. He secretly or unconsciously wants to be punched in the face and be some sort of masculine fight or something. Yeah, I agree. Maybe he needs a little life altering experience, either mentally or physically something. He's built up walls against certain bubbles trying to tell him he, uh, any type of wisdom. True. He just won't hear it. Uh, if you guys don't know FD Signifier, I've reviewed his work before. Sometimes I like it and sometimes I'm just like shook at how short sighted it is. But also, you know, I get it. Um, sometimes it's like so insightful and then sometimes it's just like not, not exactly what I want. So let's see if he gets Sneeko pretty right here and let's see if we can learn something about his observation of Sneeko. I'll link it in the so chat too, so you guys can check out the video yourself. Depending on what part of the internet you tend to hang out on, you might have seen a very viral Chico. moment recently from well-known red pill weirdo Sneeko having a photo op with some of his oldest fans. And by oldest fans, I mean 11, 12 at most. Oh, shit. And it's Hold a heartbreakingly awful moment that will make you lose some faith in humanity. So trigger warning. See, that's the thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just too old and I've seen too many things. But yeah, seeing a bunch of the kids memeing or saying hateful things because of the internet is not going to make me lose my faith in humanity. Humanity is so much stronger than this. And this is also every generation of humanity had this. Guys, the youth are impressionable. Every generation of youth had this moment. Sometimes we were those youths. So how am I going to lose faith in humanity? When humanity always has been like this. How, how disconnected of a relationship are you having from humanity that watching 12-year-olds say hateful things because they learned it from the internet is going to make you lose faith in humanity? That sounds like a you problem. Thanks for all the usual things before I play this clip. What did you take? Talk to the you. Woman, fuck the woman. What? 
no, 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 wait, wait, wait. We love women. We love women. We love women. But not, not like transgenders. Yes, sir. We love everybody. No, no. All gay men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. March, preach. Also, I'm sorry. I forgot. I also grew up in a conservative household where, like, yeah, what do you think they say about gay people? What do you think they're saying about trans people? When you go to a a church that's talking about the LGBTs, what do you think they're saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. This idea that this isn't just the rhetoric I grew up with my whole life. What do you think conservatives are saying about you and when they're together? What do you think anti-LGBT conservatives are saying about you in their churches? They're saying you're predators and groomers. They're saying you're basically PDF files. They're saying you're going to groom their children. If this is going to shake your faith in humanity, how do you think I grew up my whole life, girl? What have I done? In this moment, these little boys reflect back to Sneeko with the exact same rhetoric and energy that he has been spewing out for the better part of a year, complete with misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia. All that was missing was the newfound anti-Semitism, COVID denial, and a little bit of Bitcoin nonsense. And you'd have the entire Sneeko catalog right there on display. I've talked about Sneeko a few times. I gave him an empathetic analysis in my conservative sex video, but for the most part, I've been trying to stay away from making too much content about this guy because there's probably no one who was more blatantly grifting on the right wing than Sneeko. He genuinely has no real solid opinions on anything other than being anti whatever the left or woke is in a given moment. He genuinely makes me sad. like. At least Andrew yeah. Tate has the traumatic childhood backstory to explain his sociopathic behavior. But Sneeko, he just had a bad breakup and started spewing red pill shit as a result. And then he realized he can make way more money as a foaming at the mouth. Red. Okay, he didn't have a bad breakup. That's not what happened. It's not that he literally had a bad breakup. He caused the breakup by engaging with bad behavior. That's not the same thing. He didn't have a bad breakup. It's not like something happened to him. He did it. He caused the breakup. He's the reason he loses good relationships with good people. He's not having a bad breakup. He's having a bad moment in life. He is going towards rock bottom. We are watching a man heading towards rock bottom when we're uh, and then we're watching Andrew Tate somehow Somehow coming out on top. We're watching two different things. Andrew Tate is heading towards success in his own weird, corrupted way. And Sneeko is heading towards rock bottom because of his own decisions and relationship with his consciousness. It's not because he had a bad breakup. Ed Pill goofball than a moderately talented filmmaker or comedian. And... Don't say moderately. He's very good. He's been that ever since. And this is not some theory or attack. He's all but openly admitted that this is the case for him. My brain has almost been trained to get used to this. It's like, why oh, would I Kyla. sit down and- Oh my I God, just... please, Lord Jesus Christ. I hope I'm not in this video. Oh, Kyla. This is where like, I would draw on the videos too. Like everything happens for a reason. I, I did all these drawings and I did set up all these shots and I was stacking, stacking cards like going around, all over uh, New York City. And thinking about doing that now, spending two weeks on a video seems ugh terrible when if i can make one reaction video that has double the views why you know like just the the it, it really sucks in a sense because it's like if you only think about money and views it's like why the fuck would I ever go back to that probably the saddest thing about this moment is sneeko's reaction because it's clear that he's embarrassed with being faced with the consequences of his grift staring him directly in the face this face that he's making here is him realizing how much of a groomer he's become and that that's Ooh. how he- The left really be using that word loosely. That's why you're calling him a groomer? Cause he peddled conservative talking points? What are you, a conservative? Like this cannot be FD's argument. 
this can't be FD's argument. I refuse. He makes his money. It's a face you make when you're deeply embarrassed and ashamed, but you don't want to let that emotion wash over you. So you're just like, uh, I don't know why they would say such things to me. Cause you're a groomer, Sneeko. That's why. No. What? 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 Who? Huh? Who? Huh? No. What? What? A groomer is someone who builds a relationship and trusts an emotional connection with a child or young person so they can manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. Is what? What is this take? What is this take? This almost made me lose like faith in humanity, but then I realized like, nope, humans are going to human. Never mind. My relationship with humanity is very strong. FD is being such a human right now. What a horrible take. Whoa. I'm sorry. It is capitalism itself grooming? Like, are politicians groomers? Is Joe Biden a groomer? Because he was on Twitter the other day. What did Biden's team tweet out? I was cracking up. Um, uh, Biden's team tweeted out in Biden's voice, of course. Uh, concert tickets are expensive without all these hidden fees. Biden doesn't care if you're going to see Yonce. Like, what is this? Is if what are we? I don't even know how to how to talk about this. What a horrible take. What a just brain dead take. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, what a brain dead take. You behave the way you behave because you know it gets their attention and you want them to think you're cool and interesting. What? What is this comment? He's obviously using groomers sar 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 sarcastically or sardonically. I don't know how to, use, I don't know that word because of how Sneeko used it against the left. Is it obvious? Am I, if I've never seen an FD signifier video, and apparently I've never seen one, how is this obvious? He titled it, Sneeko is a groomer. And he just said it very seriously. How is it obvious? How is this obvious? Is this a joke? Interesting and give you money. And you feel kind of bad that this is what you've decided to do with your life, but you realize you're not talented enough to be successful doing anything else. Again, this is not a theory. He's all that's not true, though. He was very successful his whole career on YouTube, but openly admitted to this as being the case. He just didn't have the same amount of money success. When I noticed how misogynistic a lot of my fans are and how angry they got at just seeing women on a screen, it's like it's almost like I have a responsibility to to try to steer him away from that because I've, I've went down that path and I got out of it. But it could be it can go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And I the other day I was sitting at the pool and like these nine year old kids were jumping in the pool and then I noticed them start whispering and pointing at me. I'm like, these, you, you were making fun of the fact that 14 year olds are coming <laughs> up to me, TikTok, I'm, I swear to God, my main channel stuff, it's all only, it's been people in their twenties, thirties and everything. Yep. This streaming stuff and especially for the fact that I, I'm viral on TikTok all the time, mm -hmm. nine year old kids, genuine, I've never seen that in my life. And they come mm -hmm. up to me, they take a picture, they're excited. And nine year olds, it's almost like, mm -hmm you have a responsibility to try to be a role model for these kids. Even though I'm not perfect, even though I'm dumb in a lot of ways, I make a lot of mistakes, but the best role model I can be is showing people that I am human. And I'm sad because it shows that he's not as soulless as one might think. Like Andrew Tate would have stayed in character the whole time and probably never even have taken pictures with kids in the first place. He'd be too busy beating up women or sword fighting or some shit. But there are better videos about the totality of this specific situation in Sneeko. I'm actually a week late on this technically, which is not me being a good commentary guy, but you know, I'm new to this. Of course, Noah Sampson has already looked at the cringe of it all and Ro Ramden did a really good short video engaging with the heartbreaking nature of this situation. You should check both of those out. But for me, since I'm late and since I'm me, 
I got to try to figure out something useful to add to the conversation to legitimize you making a video about this motherfucker. So I want to bring it back to the whole, how is the left or are we going to save men conversation and use it as yet another example of how boys, literal boys in this case, are groomed into this type of behavior, even in the absence of a bona fide groomer like Sneeko. Another example of how boys, literal boys in this case, are groomed into this type of behavior, even in the absence of a bona fide groomer like Sneeko. Okay, Eve, to title someone a groomer, like a non-sexual groomer, is to, to, is to imply intent. And to imply intent is such a weird take. Like Sneeko's up all night being like, how do I get nine-year-olds to like me? It's like, yeah, as a business, I mean, that is every toy company a groomer because they're trying to get nine-year-olds to buy their toys? No, it's to target a child or young person in order to abuse and manipulate them. Abuse. Abuse. What are we taught? Why are you using that word grooming? Do you mean influence? Do you mean, do you mean like influence? Are you, do you mean inf the word influence? We're trying to influence people to our side, influence people to give us money. They're not grooming them. They're influencing them. Why are you saying groom? Yeah. Is Mr. Beast a groomer because he's influencing people to watch him and to like contribute to his things and buy his cookies? Why is he saying groom? To make sense of this, let's look at how Sneeko and his supporters responded to the backlash of this. I'm sorry, you're so fucking useless. These bubbles, this is what I'm saying. Humans are going to human and they deserve the world they make for themselves. This is why conservatives call LGBT people groomers. The same argument. I can't believe I have to explain this to people. That's why that. Hello. I was groomed by Sokka. OK, you know what? What a great experience. Literally, this is why conservatives will say LGBT people are grooming their kids because they're influencing them. Gay people aren't targeting chi children to abuse them and manipulate them in the same way that like the Ingrid, I was groomed by Brittany Simon. <laughs> this is so dumb. This is so harmful to the gays. This is so harmful for LGBT people. I am so frustrated, man. It's election season too. It's literally election season. How can you be so irresponsible with your language? This is so irresponsible. If you're in politics, if you're an activist, but I guess FD isn't. He's just a useless commentator. It was just fine. I am too. But like, oh my God, what a useless thing to say out loud. This is why conservatives think trans and gay people are grooming your kids because they're influencing them by just existing by having YouTube channels, by just being alive. Sneeko is, j he's in, he's trying to make money. He's not grooming. Jesus Christ. Moment. In a few tweets and Sneeko's response comments from other groups talking about <sighs> this, you see a lot of people saying stuff like boys will be boys or this is just how normal boys talk and they love edgy jokes and it's no big deal because they don't actually hate gay women and trans people. So first off, the whole boys will be boys stuff is complete bullshit. Most boys are not like this. These boys are like this. Cause eh, don't say most, cause like nobody knows what most is. Most is cultural, it's a construct. These boys' opinions are based off the construct of their culture. These boys are nobody yet, they're children. They don't even know who they are yet. Boys will be boys only applies in certain bubbles. It's a bubbled, it's, a, it's like common sense. There is no such thing as common sense. There's only cultural sense. So don't say most boys aren't like this. Most boys who? It depends on the bubble you're in. It depends on the culture. It depends on what you've been taught. This narrative of being anti-LGBT and like women are silly is a very common narrative on with boys who grew up on the internet with like no guidance from their parents. And that seems to be most kids right now. So y'all better be careful about who you say most. And also I'm generalizing and I'm assuming and I'm making the wrong statement too because you can probably poke holes in it. But don't be so confident with your statement, bro. These boys you are old shit. ass millennial. Bro, he's such a f old ass millennial. He's I know he's a dad. You just wait, bro. You just wait because I was shook that my own brother fell for the like Andrew Tate shtick. 
My brother's like not into Sneeko. He thinks Sneeko's stupid. But like he was into Sneeko for like a second. And then he's like, ah, oh, Sneeko's kind of a loser. But he's into Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate's like successful. And Sneeko's downhill. But I looked at him. I was like, why are you like this? And it's because my mom and dad were too boomer to pay attention to the internet or its trends or its culture. So they they might know the internet, like how to use it, but they don't have a relationship with culture on the internet. And FD Signifier doesn't either. If you call Sneeko a groomer, you also are disconnecting yourself from Gen Z. You have no idea what teenage boys are doing on the internet if you're calling this grooming. Teenage boys are going to look at you and think, God, you're such a fucking boomer, bro. You think this is grooming? You think you're going to... I should be a parent just to prove to all of you, these people, how useless they are as parents when it comes to understanding trends with their kids. And by the way, I'm most likely not going to be a parent because I don't want to have to keep up with what 12-year-olds are doing in the world. Ugh, how exhausting. I don't, you know. But that's what you have to do. You can't, like I see it in my own boomer parents. I see how their youngest kid, who they had at 40, and like was an, an adult by the time they were 60, how he fell into the Andrew Tate bubble because they're not on the internet looking up Andrew Tate and Sneeko videos. They're not watching Andrew Tate debates. Now they kind of know who he is because of Candace f-ing Owens. But see how Andrew Tate is infiltrating even our parents' bubbles? It's not grooming. It's called freaking influencing. And that's what FD is doing right now. Is FD signifier an, a groomer because he's an influencer? What are we talking about? I know I'm not supposed to say this. You're not supposed to <sighs> talk bad about kids on the internet. But I have kids. I've worked with kids. And I'm going to let you know, some kids are shitty. These are those kids. I guarantee you if you... Wow. Are you bullying 12-year-olds, bro? Did he just blame children for being shitty? (laughs) What are we talking about? Yes, some kids are pieces of, like, little shits. But they're fucking 12. Like, they're children. They are a reflection of our culture. They're a reflection of us. They're a reflection of how they're raised. They're 12. Did he just say, like, these are shitty kids? Like, what are you going to do? Abandon the 12-year-old boys? What is this take? You talk oh to the God. teachers, babysitters, girls in their class. They'll tell you the truth. And anyone that's worked with kids knows this to be the case. And don't. Yeah, these are the kids who have like a lack of guidance. Are you blaming the kids for being shitty? Like, I don't understand this take. Yes, they're little shits. But to call a kid shitty, to say to a child, like if this kid watches this video and he goes, hey, this grown up, this dad thinks I'm a shitty kid. What are we talking about? Don't get me wrong. I feel bad for these kids. because Some kids are terrible. That's not the same thing as saying, like, you're a shitty person. You're a shitty kid. Like, what? They're just kids. And for the most part, it's not their fault for being shitty. And it even sucks for the parents because now they have to be deeply embarrassed by this and drug through the mud. But I guarantee you. The parents should be embarrassed because they're the ones raising their children. I'm sorry. Um, Is it a language barrier thing? Children have their own consciousness, but it's a consciousness in growing and it's developing and understanding itself. It is going to be fluid and messy and uneducated and the brain is still forming. Acting shitty, acting out, having a misunderstanding of your power as a kid, not knowing it is not the same as a grown adult in his 40s calling a child, you shitty little kid. You want to just kick the shit out of him too? Like, whoa. Yeah, acting shitty and being shit are different. They're literally different things. Like, again, you can call yourself as an adult, oh, yeah, I was a shitty little kid. That's not the same thing as looking at a 12-year-old and saying, you're a piece of shit. Like, what? Again, you just want to kick the kid too while he's down? I, it's a child. And yes, some children have psychotic issues and will burn your house down and stab you in the middle of the night. These are not these children. These children are exactly the parts of society that need the most guidance and love and need the most discipline and need the most like, you know, maybe like um cool like camping trips that are like with the parents and awesome and like cool like, hey, fight each other in a ring and learn respect, like orchestrated kind of like learning the power of your body and the power of your like learning responsibility. These are the age groups that like need to learn responsibility. 
But instead you're like, oh, they're just like shitty. As if you don't want to deal with them. And then you said the parents have to be embarrassed on behalf of their kids. The parents should be embarrassed they raise children this way. You can blame Sneeko, but I'm going to blame the fucking parents. I blame my parents for my brother being interested in Andrew Tate. Because they bother, they didn't bother to stay up with the culture. They didn't bother to keep researching. They didn't bother to remind him and guide him in a very like involved way. They just figured, ah, I've raised all my kids. I'm tired. The youngest will figure it out. And he did. He figured it out and sucks Andrew Dick's Tate. Wait, Andrew Dick's Tate? <laughs> Andrew Tate's dick. Like, great. Perfect. Right? Like, what are we talking about? Calling a kid shitty creates a victim complex too. Made me feel so misunderstood and justified my shitty behavior. Yeah, it's like that kid's going to double down and be like, well, if I'm a piece of shit, then I'll be a piece of shit times 10. Every kid is different for sure. Like, there's a lot of kids in the world. Everyone can be different. But again, you're looking at a group of kids and I feel sorry for them because of the way their parents raised them and you feel embarrassed? Like you're worried about the parents being embarrassed? What? What are you talking about? They have about? parents that will say shit like boys will be boys. and I Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Say all of this just to make it clear that these kids were shitty well before they started watching Sneeko. Sneeko okay. didn't make them shitty. Okay. He made them shittier. Their behavior isn't Sneeko. Why are you calling kids shitty, bro? It's fault any more than it's Little Dirk's fault for street crime in Chicago. This is a structural and environmental problem, not the problem of media consumption for children. In fact, I actually agree with Sneeko and his supporters when they say that these kids don't hate women or trans people and are just making edgy jokes. I don't think these boys have had enough life experience to effectively develop that type of bigotry or sexism. Those things have to be taught first and then engage with okay. later in life. Okay. Instead, what they're doing is repeating the things they heard Sneeko say, which reflects the values that are already being modeled to them in society as a whole. Sneeko he okay yeah Sneeko isn't telling them anything they haven't encountered in their home school or church environment Sneeko just happens to be a focal point for this rhetoric to be lionized and celebrated but it exists outside of Sneeko and the red pill and online in general like look at the way that the one kid responds to Sneeko as he's trying to clarify who he's supposed to hate we love women we love women but not not like transgen it's the same type of response you might get if you ask a kid like a quiz question on something they learned at school. He's like, we hate these specific people, right? He doesn't understand why or even the ramifications. He's just aware that if it repeats these things, that makes him good in the eyes of Sneeko and society as a whole. So I mean, that's everyone. Everyone feels that way in every bubble. If you're in a progressive bubble, you get the same reinforcement, which is why the idea that we have access to objective truth is so funny to me. In some ways, we have access to what we think is objective, right? But again, everyone does that. They reinforce, and that's why there's this idea of, oh, you're too politically correct, or, oh, you're just saying that because people will bully you. Oh, you don't really mean that, which is why I say, like, people don't have values. They have peer pressure. People don't have values. They just have peer pressure. Saying we hate gay people, we hate women, we hate transgenders, is not an extreme take in our society right now. Going back to the whole thing with Fresh and Fit, understand the fact that Fresh and Fit were able to exist on this platform for years with minimal pushback lets you know how we feel about women in this society. The fact that Matt Walsh, a professed Christian fascist, can make a whole documentary attacking trans people and have it be promoted widely through YouTube with no pushback let you know how this country feels about trans people. These are not bugs, these are features. So this stuff is all passive and normal for everybody and for these boys until 10 years from now when they join a Tiki Torch March or storm the Capitol and some- Damn, you're prescribing so much on their future. Um, It's true, like kids, based off how they're raised, will have like X amount of problems and might follow suit for the environment they're in. That is true. I don't know if they'll be Tiki Torch people. They might just be like regular old conservatives who never go to a Tiki Torch march, right? Like my parents are staunch Republicans. They would never think to go to any of those events. They don't even understand those people. So again, they might just be like people in the world 
right? And I think most of the world is pretty anti-LGBT, right? We're working on it to the best of our ability. And most of the U.S. is actually kind of in favor of LGBT, though we're struggling with trans people representing themselves, right, in a way that in mainstream politics doesn't always involve the word grooming, which is why we should be careful with how we use it. But I do, I mean, agree with the pockets of this. I think some bubbles are having these experiences, and I think some of these boys might be tiki torch marchers, right? But it depends if their family also has that line of thinking, you know what I mean? Like that that association. Not all conservatives, not all anti-trans people, not all anti-gay people are also white nationalists. That's pretty crazy. Somebody in the comments section is going to be talking about what's happening to men. Why isn't the left doing anything for men? My friend suddenly and without warning is becoming a right wing nut job. FD, why aren't you doing anything about this? These are not my fuck. Okay, okay, okay. He's right. They're not his kids. They're your kids. He's right. But isn't he? Okay, hold on. These boys first groomer wasn't Sneeko. It was an older brother or a cousin or uncle. Stop saying groomer. Jesus Christ. I'm going to. This is so inappropriate to say in a sentence. Some of these kids groomers were their uncles or brothers. Why are you using that word, dude? You're so inappropriate right now. You're so inappropriate. Or coach or aunt or pastor, someone that they looked up to, male or female, who didn't bother to engage with them on a level that taught them something as simply as misogyny bad. Okay, bro, they don't even know what misogyny is. Like, they don't think it's misogynistic. Oh, they can't teach misogyny bad. They don't identify their behavior as misogynistic. I grew up in a home that valued my mother, that valued the women in the family, that made sure there was never any disrespect to the women in the family. But I also grew up with a family that made it clear that boys were more capable than girls in some ways, or that girls were heading in a particular direction and not the same as boys. And at the same time, I was raised by my father to take over his business. Very confusing. When I came out as gay, my dad thought it was because he raised me like a boy. And I said, you raised me like a boy? I thought you raised me like a daughter. And he's like, no, I, or I raised you as a person. And he's like, no, I raised you like a boy. I didn't take your sister to work with me. I took you to work with me. And I was like, oh. And in my head, I was like, is this what boys do? But then my grandma was a seamstress in Iraq. My grandma worked. So like, what does it mean that only boys work? It doesn't make sense, right? It's like, they don't even know what they're saying out loud. They're just kind of going along with things because it's how they were trained by generations, generations past, right? They don't identify behavior as misogynistic. When my mom says, um, you know, Batsy, I don't have a lot of girlfriends. I feel like I don't get along with women. When literally her two best friends are women and she has no guy friends, I'm like, you don't even have male friends. You only have female friends. You don't even get along with men. That's internalized misogyny. That's like, that's like my mom doesn't even realize because she's right. She has been hurt by women as we all are. If you're a woman, you know a mean girl in your life. If you're a woman who went through any kind of schooling with other girls, you have a mean girl story. I've got like four. Girls be out here being vicious. That, But if you look at your life, women are wonderful friends. Women are great. And for every bad woman story, you've got a bad man story, okay? So it's not about gender. It's about how you're bonding. But my mom doesn't know that's an internalized misogyny. When my mom victim blames in a way that doesn't hold the perpetrator accountable and it just victim blames the victim versus holding them both accountable in some way for the way that they've contributed to their life, but not the crime itself. She is suffering from internalized misogyny, making the claim that women bring these things on themselves. Well, the men, well, that's just how they are. That's why you have to protect yourself, right? They don't know they're being misogynistic in the same way that white people might not even know they're being racist when they do certain things because they don't classify it that way. So to ask them to identify misogyny is like they are to the best of their ability. My dad would say it's misogynistic to say women can't work and you hit women. So I grew up hearing you don't hit women. You don't hurt them. You certainly don't assault them. And you never yell at them or cuss at them because that's gross. But all the other displays of misogyny that happened were still there because they don't identify those specific actions as misogyny. 
Society basically expects patriarchy to raise boys. We don't raise boys. We don't teach them things. We just tell them what not to do and then shuffle them along. And we wonder why so many boys are dysfunctional by the time they become men. Like I said, I have little boys. I monitor the things they watch. I talk to them all the time about the messages they're encountering in the world and in society. I mean, in some ways, FD is kind of privileged because he's a YouTuber. He has access to online trends. Why would my parents ever know who Sneeko is, right? Like, how would they know? They didn't even know who Andrew Tate was until he started hanging out with, like, people they watched. But every every year before that, when my brother was consuming Andrew Tate content, all my brother saw was me, the sex-positive feminist, say Andrew Tate sucks. He's not going to trust me. I'm not a trusted source. And since my parents are involved, even though my dad would be a trusted source, my dad was like, don't, Andrew Tate's a jerk. Don't listen to him which is not the same thing as engaging with this content, deciphering it, going through it, like watching it and saying like, this is good, this is bad, like Peterson's trying to do. Peterson is actually trying to be people's dad by saying, hey, I know he's successful. I know he's fought in the ring. I know there's good things about him, but there's a lot of bad about him. My dad can't do that. He's not engaging in that way, mostly because my dad is so religious, he can't watch Andrew Tate content because Andrew Tate content's all about sex and women and boobs. And my dad can't watch that stuff. My dad doesn't watch uh, content that glorifies sexualization, the sexualization of women. So. I'm not up late reading bell hooks to them as bedtime stories, but I'm caring enough to have conversations about the fact that they will inevitably face shitty boys. And so when they face those shit. Sorry, I just want to answer this question. Um, I know this isn't intended, but does the ignorance make it better? It's different, sure, but I don't think it really takes away the impact. I think intent matters when understanding how to dismantle problems and help people, but I don't think it changes the impact, and so we have to talk about the impact, right? But plenty of people, right, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, guys. People have really good intentions, and then they kill you in the Holocaust. So just, Okay shitty boys, they'll have some defense against this type of behavior. And if I were to ever see them behaving in this way, I would do some very intense, gentle parenting. And don't get me wrong. This is not to say that those of us with better. Yeah, wait, it sounds like by FD's own definition, he's admitting to grooming his kids like he obviously isn't. But if this is how he uses grooming, he definitely is. I, that's what I'm saying. He's a groomer. You can't use groomer by the definition he's using it and not say everyone is a groomer. If by FB, FD signifier's definition, this is grooming, he's a groomer. Ooh. Oh my God. Her ideas about how to raise boys and how to engage boys in the world should just throw our hands up and never say anything. But it's to respond to this criticism that people aren't doing enough. People refuse to admit that the bulk of red pill consumers are literal children. Red pill ideology is a natural extension to how so many boys are already being raised and taught in this world. It's boys who have been groomed in a patriarchal society to see the type of goofy antics of a Sneeko as amusing influenced. and Just say influenced. People are influenced. Harmless. If you've ever watched Sneeko's content, it's pretty clear you're not getting highbrow, mind expanding content. You're getting- Yeah, anymore anymore getting low effort toilet humor half the time that will be most appealing to boys between 11 and 15. the worst of those boys might get sucked in deep and stay there for longer but most will phase out and graduate to joe rogan which is still bad but at least not as embarrassing what makes someone a groomer is that they identify vulnerable and impressionable young people and they take advantage of that vulnerability to extract some type of benefit for typical Um, bro? Groomers are usually talking about sex and control over their bodies, but for guys like Sneeko, it's money and attention. But the system makes that possible. I used to work in anti-sex trafficking, and the modern discourse on sex trafficking will have you thinking that it's just slick-talking pimps in bright fancy suits or evil sex traffickers from Europe snatching children off the streets in white vans. Both of those things are relatively rare for the real problem of the types of girls that become victims to sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is a problem of economics. When young girls and some boys are in dire situations because of a lack of care or stability or resources, they end up in the streets. In fact, one of the big 
biggest predictors of whether or not a girl will end up a victim of sex trafficking is whether or not she runs away from home. Like I guarantee if you go and you look through Andrew Tate's sex trafficking case, you'll find that probably many of his victims are girls from meager economic background who the police or the system care little about. The best way to address sex trafficking is to address the economic and social needs of young girls and boys so that they don't fall prey to the groomers and predators who come sniffing around. And the same goes for little boys and red pill nonsense. It's not just the red pill content they consume, it's the social environment that makes red pill content viable in the first place. I've, I've heard people critique the idea that the way we talk about identity politics just make Okay, so he knows the definition of groomer. Again, I have a really hard time calling Sneeko a groomer more than just an influencer. Like that's what influencers do. They have a target audience and then they make content to get that target audience to pay attention to them so they can make money. It's not to take advantage of them. It's to make money, which is not the same thing. Toy companies aren't grooming customers to make money off Barbie. They're not, they're making a product and you're buying a product. Sneeko is making a product and making a, like, again, he's not taking advantage of teenagers who gave them money in the first place. Nobody. He's using their views. Like, it's just influencing. To call it grooming is so weird. It's like. I can't fathom how this is grooming. It might be a scam, but not really even that. Right? I think he's calling it grooming because he thinks the content is harmful. All content is harmful. Like all content is harmful to somebody. Usually when people use groomer or groomer, they're 85 plus of the, the of the time meaning sexually grooming for later molestation or rape. If we go so far, no, Sneeko is not a groomer. Well, in this case, he's saying non-sexual grooming. Can you take advantage of people take money? Yes, but usually that's like a scam because you trick people like Andrew Tate scammed people most likely out of their money while well, he scammed them by pretending to be the sex workers they were talking to, which in some ways is just the model of some sex workers. He scammed people if everything he said in his videos were a lie and a character because he told people how to make money. And if it's not true what he said in that video, then he's a scammer, right? If you maybe groom in a cult, I can see grooming in cults. Like you groomed people to love the cult and to be a part of the cult and to vi like maybe you can groom in a cult. But if you're an influencer who's making money and you write copy and you're like, yep, this is our audience. This is who we're selling to. It just feels like that's just like what an influencer is. Like Logan Paul might have scammed people with CryptoZoo, but he didn't groom them. I was around for the Logan Paul era and like I thought his crypto shit was silly, right? And I was upset that he used images that weren't originally his and all that stuff. That's a scam, or like a, a bullshit way of dealing in capitalism, which lots of people engage with, right? I don't think it's ethical. And I think he should return people's money, but he's not grooming. I think grooming is more appropriate with like cult-like behavior. And I just don't think Sneeko is creating a cult-like behavior. Are cults grooming if the members are of age? Yes. I think they're grooming and preying on, oh, I get, oh, wait, shoot, you're right. Hold on. N can you groom uh, vo emotionally vulnerable people. I think you can manipulate. Ooh, okay. So cults would manipulate and coerce, mostly manipulate, I think, vulnerable people to be a part of the cult. But yeah, I don't think, yeah, that's your point. Grooming is for young people. Okay, so grooming, see, I can't even use that word. So again, Sneeko is, yeah, I think Sneeko isn't a groomer. He's, you know, well, by definition, you can't groom adults because you would have to be a child. So you can't groom adults. You would manipulate adults and lie to them.
which is different. Dr. Kirkonda is really trying to hold us accountable with how we use words, and I appreciate his efforts, because we used to have common words for these actions that weren't so malicious, like narcissistic, just meant like you have such an ego on you. But now we're like, you're a narcissist, you're a narcissist, you're a narcissist. Like people aren't literally out here narcissizing. -ing. Like they're not narcissists, they're just big-headed or arrogant. And I think I'm going to try to make a concerted effort to use words a little bit more contextually um, to bring down the heightened, like when we use the word grooming, I just feel like it's too much. He, what definition of grooming are we using? The one he just gave. Targeting young people to manipulate them so you can abuse them. And no, we aren't specifying sexual grooming because FD signifier is specifying non-sexual grooming. People feel bad and it sounds like original sin that you're just automatically a bad person if you're a straight white man. And well, I really empathize with the idea of being judged based on your appearance. I, I know that must feel horrible. That argument is mostly cope. It's the fact that people don't. I understand the defensiveness because it is very annoying when men are like, nobody cares about our feelings or our emotions. Bitch, how do you think women feel? Dumb f That's why we're so defensive because we spent our whole life telling, being told our emotions don't matter and we're because we cry and you expect us not to look at you like, oh, now you want to cry? Now you want to be a put Not while you're demeaning women. Look, I don't mind when my man cries. Because he's not also denying me my agency to cry. If you deny people their agency to feel represented, of course they're going to get bitter and not give it to you. I love when men cry because they're not the men who deny me my right to cry. I'm allowed to be upset. He's allowed to be upset. But of course, it's very hard to care about men's feelings or that the fact that they cry when they call you a p and a woman for crying want to believe that a system is fixed to produce a specific outcome even as they see that outcome continue to be reproduced over and over and over again no matter what shallow down the line interventions people put out there the same problems have been occurring in our society for literal generations and some people would rather just say that's naturally how society is supposed to happen than look at themselves and their behavior and how they contribute to those problems happening in the first place but this isn't a full FD signifier video, so we'll leave that alone. But the lesson I give to you here is don't just mean tweet at Sneeko for being a groomer and call yourself counteracting the red pill. Okay. Push to work and connect with boys in your community. Talk to them about this stuff. Ask them and monitor who they're watching online. Have some talks with them on the nature of the content that they're consuming and try to do so in a way that pulls them in as opposed to pushes them out. Okay. If they Okay. Yes, sir. They are shitty. Support them on the Why are you calling 12 year olds shitty? See, like if a 12 year old watched this, so this video isn't for the kids. If a kid saw this, I wouldn't trust FD signifier. If I was a kid and I saw this, I'd be like, I'm this guy's this guy thinks I'm a piece of shit and I'm not worthy of love or compassion. And he just wants me to be on his side so his life is easier. But this video is for the adults who are helping kids. So FD Signifier did not make this video for young kids to find. Because if they found it, I think they'd want to feel, they would feel awful. But he made it for the adults who are like frustrated and already hate the kids. And he's saying, don't hate the kids. They're kids. But that's weird. Why are you all hating kids? The way out of being shitty. If their parents are shitty, do what you can. Also, yeah. remember, don't start with my videos or highly academic concepts or texts or work. It's going to be too much too soon. And you can probably get much further just by talking about some of their favorite positively masculine characters in media. Like both Spider-Man are amazing. Deku from My Hero yeah. Academia. Pretty much every iteration uh, uh, my hero. of the Ninja Turtles. The idea that we don't have positive boy or male role models in the media is bullshit. There's plenty and you could really start there and get a lot more done. Show them that guys like Sneeko and Andrew Tate would be the villains to guys like Spider-Man. All that said, I will, I will leave some academic readings and videos and description. And if you have any other books or pieces of content that are easy to digest as a starting point for counteracting the types of messages that these boys are getting in society, please leave that in the comment section. Probably try to make like a, at least a watch list. Or okay, I'm gonna like the video. Only because I think that overall for his bubble, he is sending out the right message. But I will also say I don't 
find this very helpful outside of his bubble, of course. And I think it's important to recognize like Deku isn't a masculine character and neither is Spider-Man. Like I don't consider Spider-Man incredibly masculine. I definitely consider him more feminine, even the original Peter Parker. I think that's pretty true, right? He's like, um, he's not the masculine character in the story, even in high school. He's like bullied by the masculine characters, toxic masculine. He holds like a softness to him. Spider-Man is more feminine. So again, and Deku is more feminine. So I think using those examples are going to be hard for boys to latch onto when Sneeko and Andrew Tate especially are masculine figures. Well, Sneeko, we're going to move that out of the way. Andrew Tate is considered a masculine character. So a better masculine influence of positivity would be somebody maybe like, um, well, I was going to say Gojo, but even Gojo is technically uh, in his femme. Uh, who's a masculine? Um, Vig- Goku? Goku and... Vegeta is a good example of somebody like who went on a villain arc and then got better and goes back and forth. Vegeta be fighting demons out here, but Vegeta is generally speaking a good, oh, um, a, a good, re, a good, um, a real human. Like he makes a lot of mistakes. He goes back and forth. He has a lot of, Kakashi's a good, um, male role model, but Bakash, Kakashi be chill as hell. Like Kakashi be chill as hell. So he, you know, he only uses violence when it like makes sense, but he kind of like, you know, it, there's something to be said here. I don't, th- I don't think it's a bad narrative. Listen, I almost want to have kids so I can watch anime with them. I almost want to have kids so I can watch anime with them, you know? Yeah, but all the incels who feel bad about themselves because they aren't super masculine could appreciate Deku. I agree. I love Deku. Even more than Deku, even All Might. All Might is this faux representation of masculinity, but in his actual form is not. So if anything, All Might is a great example of when we need to be something more, we can do that, right? Goku does stay a boy, though. That is true. And um, um, what's its name? <clears throat> Who's the antithesis to All Might? Um, Endeavor. Endeavor is somebody who has a very complicated past, who was abusive, who gets better and seeks forgiveness. Endeavor and Vegeta and these characters, I think, are much more apt for this generation of boys because they want to be in their villain era because they feel like they have to live up to so much. And I don't blame you. Like, you you probably do feel that way, right? It's going to be hard to find good male role models that don't have a balance of femininity in there. Yeah, I would say Endeavor and Vegeta are really good examples for the I'm in my villain arc boy. I think if Sneeko paid a little bit of attention, maybe he could learn something, but he doesn't care. He doesn't want to change right now, so you can't. I don't see Deku or Peter Parker uh, are not – I don't see how Deku and Peter Parker aren't masculine. Really? Do you think they're – really? I mean, they're written that way. They're literally written to be – in their feminine. So that's interesting. Um, Because Peter Parker is bullied by the masculine guy at school. He's bullied. You know, Spider-Man is a kid too. He is a kid, you know. You know. Does Brit not want kids anymore? No, it's not about want. I want a baby. Do I want a middle schooler? (laughs) And I am coming up on that age where like I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to my kid's graduation at 60. So I better have this kid fast. (gasps) Thorfinn. Thorfinn's complicated. Right. But I will say the same brother that loves Andrew Tate put me onto Vinland Saga and loves Vinland Saga, even season two, which I haven't gotten into, but apparently it's really great. So I just want to say something to think about. I think we're missing masculine with hyper masculine, which is a different standard. Sure. Could be a different standard for sure. You know, all these words mean different things. And every boy that says, I want to be a man, that boy has to decide what does a man look like to you, right? What does a man look like to you? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool